all the way to the top lot. Woo! We are up here. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today we have a user requested video after a bunch of my electric bike reviews. I got a lot of comments saying, hey, test out one of these. So today we're taking a look at the all new Zoo's Ultra Urban 1100. So if you're not familiar with Zoo's bikes at all, let's talk about what really drew me to this thing. It is 100% the aesthetics. The styling of this bike with the 4130 chromoly steel frame, the Zoo's patented seat, and even the cool number plate up front, this really reminds me of like a BMX bike that I used to ride as a kid. This is a class two e-bike, so you have five different levels of pedal assist as well as a thumb throttle. And the 1100 Ultra Urban being the biggest, baddest bike that Zeus is producing right now, this thing is powered by a 58 volt direct drive motor in the rear and a 1092 watt hour battery. That battery will take roughly five hours give or take to charge from zero all the way back up to 100%. And the motor is rated for 750 watts with a peak output of 1600 watts. With all of those electrical components, we're looking at about a top speed of 33 miles per hour and roughly a 30 to 45 mile expected range. This thing is coming in fairly light because it is so simple, but strong at the same time. It is 65 pounds and it comes with a load capacity of about 350 pounds. These do come standard with hydraulic disc brakes. Up front, we have a 203 millimeter front rotor with a 180 millimeter in the rear. And now new for 2023, this bike has undergone some pretty substantial changes. They are still using the same battery, controller, motor, connections, and all of that stuff is the same. But then up front, these things are now coming standard with a handlebar stem LED headlight, which is pretty neat. The number plate up front is shipping with all Zeus bikes now, and they are compatible with any of the nine and a half inch high-rise handlebars. And now for one of the biggest upgrades, we're talking about the crank set, bottom bracket, and the pedal assist sensor. They have completely redesigned this. It's all integrated together, and there's no more square taper. They're using a 24 millimeter spline chromoly shaft, which makes this bike lighter, stronger, and really simpler overall. They also have different connection points in the front and rear if you want to mount up any kind of luggage rack. And on their website, there's a whole list of third-party accessories which will work great with these bikes. They are available in a bunch of different colors. I opted for the wolf white version which is a little bit outside of my norm. Typically I like all black everything but the styling of this thing, the ergonomic placement of the handlebars and the frame, I am really really excited to get out here and test this thing out. Let's do this thing. Zoos 1100 Ultra Urban. I'm currently filming today in Moab, Utah, which is one of my favorite places in the entire country. And while there are a lot of off-road trails and all sorts of explorations to go on here, we're gonna keep it to some of the bike paths because even the bike paths around here are pretty nuts. I'm starting the testing on the south side of town and we're currently at a van expo. Electric bikes and van life go together like pancakes and syrup. You don't always need it, but when you have it, it's really nice. It makes getting around here and talking to people pretty dang easy. I am tracking this ride, so we're gonna go from South Moab all the way up north, and we're eventually gonna run this thing all the way down to 0%. So let's see if there are even bike paths all the way down here. So it looks like no bike paths down on this side of town, but eventually we can ride through this community and get up to some trails. So let's just start the testing right here with all of the electronics. Now the screen over on the left side of the handlebars here is very nice. It's super simple. You can dive into some settings and really fine tune how much power you're getting with the bike. But the simplicity of it is, is a switch on the removable battery. Flick that on, press and hold the top button for a few seconds, and then the screen will light up with all your information. There's a plus and a minus button underneath the display, so if I press and hold the plus button for about two seconds, the display dims a little bit, and now the headlight and taillight are on. The taillight also works as a brake light too, which is really nice. For today's testing, I'm gonna try to conserve as much power as possible, even though those LEDs really aren't drawing much. We're gonna leave it off. Pedal assist mode zero right now, and the thumb throttle is still active. So as soon as this bike is on, the thumb throttle is ready to go all the time 
which I love on e-bikes because I ride these things essentially like a moped or a scooter. Now just riding this thing as a normal bike, it really feels like an old bike that you'd ride back in the day. I was born in the 90s, so this thing feels right at home. No fat tire, we're using a, I believe 26 by two and a half inch tire, so pretty standard tire size. No suspension, just all hard, rigid frame, and this really feels like a bike that you could like take to a skate park. So no gear selection on this thing. I can pedal along here, we're doing 13 miles an hour. So if this bike ever does die, it's still fairly light at 65 pounds and I can ride this thing kind of like normal. Now when it comes to the crank set and the sensor and everything that we talked about that they've refreshed on the 23 model, they are using a cadence sensor on this bike, which is generally not my favorite. However, when a cadence sensor is really tuned up, when the company puts a lot of effort into the actual feel of the bike, I don't mind a cadence sensor. Generally, I prefer torque, but this cadence sensor with just my like 10 miles of testing so far is super solid. So I'll press the plus button. We are now in pedal assist mode one. Just a little bit of power from my own legs and the acceleration is nice and smooth. I'm pedaling along with really no effort right now. As soon as I stop pedaling, that motor disengages. It's not pulling me forward. It does accelerate fairly quickly. So when I'm not pedaling like now and then just give it one or two cranks, the bike picks up with that power really nicely. Let's go into pedal assist mode two. I guess we'll go down this way. That power comes on strong. It really makes pedaling effortless. And we can adjust this pedal assist mode all the way up to five, of course. So mode two, doing about 12 miles an hour. Up to mode three, we're doing about 14 now. And the way this bike comes right out of the box is a class two e-bike. So it is legal on most bike paths. Of course, you gotta check your own local state laws and know where you're riding, but there is a way to dive into these settings to up the top speed a little bit. I'm not gonna show you guys that in this video, but I can already tell you this is a bike that I'm gonna bring with me on a bunch of adventures, so maybe I'll do a full video on that if you guys wanna see how to dive into the settings. Let's go up to pedal assist mode four. Woo! Picks up quite a lot there. Now we're doing about 16 miles an hour. I'm putting almost no effort into it. And now let's just go all the way up. Woo! Pedal assist five. This will take you to about 20 miles an hour. I'm really just spinning the pedal so the motor stays engaged. And this is what makes it a class two right here. So they advertise the range at about 35 to 40 miles, I believe in today's testing. I'll probably be on the short end of that just because I know I'm gonna be using this throttle quite a lot. But until we find some bike paths, I'm just gonna kind of pedal along slowly and really get a feel for this thing. As far as the dimensions and ergonomics of this bike goes, it feels super solid. When I took it out of the box, I did have to do a little bit of assembly. You throw the front tire on, you throw the bars on and position them how it's comfortable for you. I opted to put the number plate on because it looks really cool. Setup took about 30 minutes and I'm not showing that on video because Zoo's actually just recently started a YouTube channel and they have a ton of good information on there for setup, maintenance, other specifications of their different bikes. So if you guys wanna check that out, I will leave a link for their channel down in the description below. Now the Zoo's patented seat is this super long banana style seat and it is extremely comfortable, at least from my first impression of sitting on it. We will see after 20, 30 miles on this thing if I'm getting sore at all, but for a rider my size, I weigh 175 pounds right now. I'm about 5'10". The pedaling is super comfortable because I can sit really far back on the seat. I position my bars exactly where I like them. Kind of feels like a BMX racing setup. Pedaling sitting down is great. I can scoot up if I want to try to risk my life and ride with a passenger on the back. Standing up to pedaling, it all just feels like an old VMX bike that I grew up riding as a kid. From my very first impression of taking this thing out of the box, everything on this fit and finish is phenomenal. Great welds, awesome paint colors. Again, this is the Wolf White. There are a bunch of different colors to choose from and once they're gone, I guess they're gone forever. So it's kind of like limited edition colorways. So if you are interested in these bikes, check out their website and see what other colors they offer. But back to the components, we got these hydraulic disc brakes up here, which obviously when I pulled out of the box, 
put the handlebars on and then I adjusted everything the position of the throttle position of the brakes and screen so for the handlebars I love the high rise the grips on here are super cushy I prefer wearing gloves when I ride bikes and motorcycles but I could totally ride this bike without gloves and be very comfortable all day we got that 203 millimeter front rotor 180 in the rear as we're going down this hill here doing 22 23 let's make it uh 26 all right so about 25 miles an hour let's just lock these up i don't want to do it too hard though because i know this bike is going to stop <laughs> that is exactly what you want on an e-bike something that is powered other than your own legs this thing can obviously reach some pretty cool pretty fast top speeds and because it does weigh more than a regular bmx bike you want to have good brakes to stop so the feel of the hydraulics is way better than mechanical in my opinion it will require a little bit more maintenance but if you can maintain a regular bike you can maintain something like this i started this testing with the battery full we have already gone about four miles and of course it is still full it's just Oh, it's so nostalgic feeling. It's a brand new electric pedal bike, but it feels like this is a bike that I've owned for so long. Now, not having suspension may push people away a little bit. There are some manufacturers out there who like putting fat tires on the bike because it gives it a little bit more cushiony of a ride, but this is the Ultra Urban. It's an urban explorer, even though we're not really in a super urban environment right now. I don't really feel the need for suspension, like even coming off road here, it just feels good <laughs> little hops and bunny hops over manhole covers these tires are of course slick so not gonna have the greatest traction but on road this thing is nimble and flickable I feel right at home on this bike right from the get-go now before we actually get into town where there are a bunch of bike paths I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people because it is a weekend in Moab We've got a car behind me here let's go a little faster check out this thumb throttle so starting from the pedal assist mode going up from like 20 miles an hour up to 30 very quickly this thing feels great I should be able to keep up with traffic actually I could speed right here 25 mile an hour speed limit dead stop no pedaling let's just go all throttle so very smooth acceleration because the bike is light and they're using skinny tires it accelerates quickly we're doing 25 we're doing 26 27 we are currently speeding right now 28 29 and 30 up a little bit of a hill hopefully there's no cops <laughs> looks like we can go up through whatever this is and when you get in the dirt pedal assist mode is great but i'm going to prefer using that throttle that way i can keep my pedals even and flat ah, out onto the main road now so this will be the best top speed test right here pretty flat maybe a little bit of a downhill doing 32 33 is what they advertise right there and it's holding pretty steady at 33 so already advertised to spec on the top speed this to me is plenty fast for an e-bike you could really get in trouble going this fast especially with other cars around you so of course i'd recommend wearing gear I'm currently wearing a full face helmet and that to me is awesome that is with my personal adjustment of diving into the settings on the controller over here i did set the top speed to be as high as possible there are a lot of areas throughout the country where class 2 is the highest classification of bike that you can ride so again be safe with uh using all the power of a bike like this make sure you're not getting yourself into trouble this thing is not made for off-road but <laughs> you can kind of do a little bit of everything with it looks like we got a bike path here i really want to get out to some of the trails though all right now we're getting into town where i don't want to use full throttle all the time obviously trying to be respectful of people walking others riding bikes 
So this is where I'm really gonna use pedal assist mode. Five is pretty extreme for riding around town, so let's bump it down to three. Oh, and one of the best things about this bike, it's gonna be hard to tell right now, but this thing is lightweight, strong, super sleek with good cable management and everything, but it is silent. This bike is insanely quiet, and when compared to some other bikes that would be basically a direct competitor of something like this, this thing, makes virtually no noise even going 30 miles an hour i don't notice the electronics if i'm passing people on the sidewalk or a bike path if i don't have the lights on most people probably wouldn't even really be able to tell that this is a pedal assist e-bike now having a super quiet motor on a bike like this is never something that i truly cared about if i'm riding an e-bike i like a little noise here and there but for anyone out there in the market for a super high quality e-bike that wants to be a little inconspicuous when riding around town. Maybe you're in an area where e-bikes are kind of frowned upon. This is the ticket. This thing is so quiet. Let's get on the throttle a little bit here. Doing 20 miles an hour and you cannot even tell that that motor is cranking back there. Now that I'm in town, I can really tell that this is where this bike shines can hop up and down curbs if you're strong enough you can definitely bunny hop this thing and if you check out Zeus's Instagram they quite often post different clips of people riding in bike parks jumping these things in quarter pipes and it's kind of crazy I'm definitely not gonna be doing that in today's testing but it seems like this is a bike that's super rugged and durable it can take some big hits Kind of want to get off of the main street here. Maybe ride some of the back streets to get away from some people. This place is just a freaking playground for bikes and dirt bikes and side-by-sides and vans. Everything under the sun. Let's see if we can keep up with the mailman. He could deliver some mail around Moab with this thing. <laughs> Ooh, this would be a fun trip right here. So this road will take us directly up to the Sand Flats wreck area which is great for riding mountain bikes, gravel bikes, dirt bikes, side-by-sides, and everything else. It does require a fee, so we'll skip that for now. I'm still in town for another day or two, so maybe we'll go up there and make some videos as well. Love that area. How about the grip on these tires? I don't wanna crank through corners too fast and slip out and hurt myself, but this thing feels absolutely planted, and with, a regular size tire and wheel size you can customize these things like crazy one of the things that i've already found with zoos bikes and their owners is that the community is very die hard i actually joined the zoos facebook group and if you guys are interested in learning some more information on these bikes i'll leave a link for that in the description down below as well the community of zoos owners out there or zoosers as they call themselves they do all sorts of crazy modifications to these bikes because it is similar to a bmx bike i see people with pegs on them they change out custom seats they're doing different lighting modifications handlebar pads they're really going to town with customizing these things and i may have to dabble in that a little bit you guys know i like customizing motorcycles and everything else. Seems like the aftermarket support for these is awesome. Zoos actually has an accessory page on their website where you can find compatible accessories. And then at the same time, most regular BMX bike parts, grips and handlebars and stuff, will probably work on this thing. Now their company also offers discount codes to basically spread the word, which is one of the reasons why I think the Zoos community is probably one of the best pedal e-bike communities out there. It's not just them giving back to the community for people like myself who likes making videos and spreading the word about everything. It's every customer out there. If you own a Zoos bike, you can actually sign up for a code which will give your friends and family and people that you tell about the bikes a discount on them. And I believe you can even get a kickback from it at the same time. You can find a lot of information about that on their website. I'll actually sign up for that and leave one of my personal codes down in the description if you guys are interested in picking up a bike. You can save a bunch of money, join the community, and I'm actually excited to meet other Zoosers out there. I have not been fortunate 
enough to see one of these bikes in person before, so I was really going into owning one of these things completely blind. So I made the jump, so I made the jump, took a chance on a bike that I really didn't know a ton about, and I'm super, super happy with this thing. This is where the bike path really starts. We're doing 30 miles an hour. I know there's a lot of wind noise, but I can't even feel or hear that motor at all. It is super silent. Maybe I should think about a horn mod because if I'm flying up on people walking like this right here, they really can't even hear that I'm coming. There is something cool to say about bikes that sort of make a whirring noise like electric cars have to do for safety reasons, but I really like how silent this thing is. Oh, hill test. Sunset Grill, one of my favorite restaurants in town. Let's go into pedal assist mode five. And now I'm gonna be seated and go up this super steep hill. <laughs> there are even some vehicles that struggle to drive up this, so let's see how it does. Hello. <laughs> this is cheating so hardcore. Doing 12 miles an hour. Let's see if we can beat this suburban up the hill. Now that it's getting steeper, gotta pedal a little more. <laughs> Makes it super easy with that 1600 watt output. How about just throttle up the hill? Throttle definitely overtakes the pedal assist mode. All right, man, you got a V6 or a V8 in that thing. I'll let you pass. So I think going up a hill this steep, pedal assist may be the way to go. With just the throttle, you're not helping the bike out at all. So pedal assist mode five, that definitely used a lot of power, but we're still full. All the way to the top lot. Woo! We are up here. Now I know for a fact that GoPro footage of that hill climb did not really do justice, but let me tell you, it is very steep. We are totally gonna put these brakes to the test here. And I'm gonna have to put a lot of faith in them because <laughs> We got a long, steep way down. I'm sure we could hit a top speed around here if I was comfortable, 100% comfortable with this bike. You could really rip through these turns, but I'm gonna take it pretty easy. It's like a downhill, of course. Doing 28, the brakes still feel good. They would definitely heat up if I was on them the whole time going down here. There's a lot of e-bikes that I've tested where I would definitely not ride down this, especially with mechanical brakes and a really heavy bike, doing like 30 miles an hour. That's a recipe for disaster, but the Zoos Ultra Urban is doing a great job. Woo! I wasn't really keeping an eye on the speed there, but there's a good chance we broke 33 through that. Back to the path to the north end of town. Now while we are all the way out here, might as well go to one of the coolest places in Moab. A little touristy, it's gonna be a ton of people, but we still got full power on this bike and Arches National Park is just like a mile or two up the road. So let's go see what Arches is looking like. Ooh, jump. <laughs> this thing feels solid. So from the south end of Moab all the way up to Arches National Park, we've only lost one bar of battery. Now I did not bring my National Park Pass with me, typically I carry it in my wallet but I left it back in the van so I don't think I'm going to be able to actually go into the park right now but that would be pretty neat. And there is a huge line of cars right here. A one hour wait from this sign, oh my gosh. That is kind of crazy. Excuse me, coming through. Nothing to see here. Just a dude on a bicycle. 
Hey, nice rebel. Yeah, I think we're gonna opt out of this one. Oh my gosh, there's so many people. Back to Moab. outside of Moab now and we've done about 20 miles and I've only lost one bar of battery. That's with a little bit of testing of the pedal assist modes and then mainly riding in pedal assist 5 for hills and then throttle when I'm on a shared road like this right here. The speed for me seems to be about 30 for the top unless we have a little bit of a decline helping us out. If you are a little bit lighter of a rider, you'll probably see that 33, which we saw for a little bit there, for quite longer, maybe the entire life of the battery. I'm curious to see if there's any sag, but with how far I've gone already, I don't really wanna go much further than where I'm headed right now, because I still gotta make my way all the way back to the south end of town. The bike route opens up again right here. There's a ton of rock climbing and trailheads, mountain bike trails out here. But I'm gonna head to one where I have some memories. One of the gnarliest mountain biking things I've done. And I bet where all of these guys are coming from right now. So if we come down to this little stop sign and through this tunnel. This right here is the bottom of Porcupine Rim, which is the last section of the whole enchilada, which I rode on one of my mountain bikes about two years ago now. I've always wanted to come back, but if anyone has ridden the whole enchilada from the top of the mountains all the way to the north side of town, seeing this tunnel, is a very, very good feeling. <laughs> now I will make about a 20 mile journey back to town, back to the van, and we'll see if the battery runs down anymore. I'll give you guys my final thoughts in a little bit. All right guys, back from a quick little Moab adventure around town from the south side all the way out to Arches to the bottom of Porcupine Rim and all the way back through town. As I was pulling back into our campsite here, the battery was blinking, so I know it's pretty close to zero, but now that I'm sitting here not using a ton of power, it's back to one bar of battery left, so in theory, I could probably get maybe another mile or two. But so far, I have ridden the Zeus Ultra Urban 1100, a total of 30.15 miles, so well within the specs that they say, about 30 to 45 miles. Most of that time was pedal assist five. We did that really steep hill climb out at Sunset Grill, and I was cranking on the throttle almost the entire ride. Coming down that big hill, we ended up going a max speed of 40 miles per hour. That's obviously with gravity included. But with a rider my size and weight, I was able to do the advertised 33 miles per hour pretty efficiently on a flat road. Towards the end of the battery life there, when I was full throttle and we were down to like the battery blinking on me, the top speed was a little bit lower. I was seeing about 25 to 26 on some flat roads there, but overall the battery sag was not bad at all. The build quality of this thing is just phenomenal. I wish you guys could see one of these bikes in person and hopefully there will be a lot more Zoozers out there in the future so you guys can see one of these for yourself. This thing was insanely comfortable. It really is sort of nostalgic for me because it feels like I'm riding a BMX bike. Like I could pop off some jumps and even riding through the dirt, it really wasn't bad. These tires are grippy. The customization of this entire bike, there's so many things you can do to it. I haven't really modified any of my electric bikes yet, but I think this one is going to be the easiest to do. So maybe I'll bring you guys some mod videos of the zoos in the future. Now, if you guys have any questions on this bike, let me know in the comments down below. I'll try to answer anything as best as possible. Again, check out the description for all of those links. If you're interested in purchasing one of these, I will also leave that code down there to help save you guys some money. And I think that is going to be all for today. You can expect to see this thing on the channel 
a few more times here in the future before the snow sets in. So that's all that I have for today. If you're new here, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. As always, thank you for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.